Well, hello everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Ben Poor, and I'm the Vice President for Infinity here in the Americas. And uh, Andy Palmer, I'm the uh, Executive Vice President for Infinity uh, globally. So this is our second live chat for Infinity. If those of you who participated with us before, we were in uh, Pebble Beach, we introduced the concept of the, the all-new Infinity GX. Today we're coming to you live from the Los Angeles uh, Auto Show. And behind us, behind Andy and myself, is the all-new JX that we just introduced today. We also introduced a new Infinity Performance Line convertible here in Los Angeles. Two new products that will be in our showrooms in, well, the better part of about six months, in April of next year. So this is all about questions from you in terms of sent in through Twitter, through Facebook, through live stream. And so, I'm, Andy, I'm just going to get right to them. Yeah, why? Why not? And the very first one is for you, I would say. It says, Andy, uh, I've seen that you mentioned previously that Infinity will be selling 500,000 vehicles around the world. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the plan to get there? Yeah, sure. Well, we will be uh, 500,000 or, or, or more. Um, the plan to get there is uh, between 2010 and 2016. We will be um, bringing 10, at least 10 new products. Uh, of course, this is uh, the JX is is one of those products. Um, so, a big ons uh, onslaught of new vehicles. Uh, that that's part of the part of the uh, part of the plan. Another part of the plan is that the we have a big geographical expansion. Mm. Um, by the end of the uh, the plan, we'll be in something like 72 countries around the world. So, I mean, if you just take the very near future, for example, uh, we just announced uh, Infinity in Mexico. Just launched uh, last week, just, in just, fact. Just last Correct. week, yeah. exactly. We're going to be um, uh, Indonesia. That was done a couple of months ago. Uh, we've got Singapore. We've got Malaysia. We've got We've got Hong Kong, we've got uh, Australia, and there's a whole host of other ones which are, which are coming. So big geographical expansion. But I think probably the most um, most interesting thing is is about what the brand stands for, mm. and um, ba basically how we position the brand as being, if you will, uh, an antidote to German luxury brands. Something that's not a me too. German car, something that's uh, very, very different. So obviously it's a luxury car, drives like a BMW, but uh, brings uh, Asian hospitality and is designed and executed in a way that's very sensuous, very curved, very sexy. Yeah. Um, you know, just a very different place from one of our friends in, uh, in, in the German brands. We, we like the word sexy, actually. That defines our brand, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's different than what's out there today. Exactly, and it means that the, the brand itself will appeal to, uh, to an audience that is, generally speaking, you know, five, six years younger than, than, than somebody uh, that somebody's buying into the German brand, or at least behaves five or six right. years younger, yeah. which, of course, also means that the JX is great for that. Well, and the, the next question comes from Heather Carr. Okay. Um, and Heather writes, I'm looking to get a seven seat vehicle for my family how's the JX different from your competition so Andy this gets to the yeah exactly you said antidote to the German luxury I'd call it in here we like to say in America antidote to ho-hum luxury okay and and what's out in the marketplace today in this segment let's be honest there's a there's an Acura MDX it's been there for years it is what it is and there's a Lexus RX but they're every shade of vanilla you could you could mm -hmm. imagine so the JX really our, our idea here um, is to take it and shake up this segment, the status quo of what's out there. So we're starting with styling, and you can hopefully you can see it behind us. Um, they're shaking their head to me that you can see it through the camera. But we take the Infinity Essence, which is our concept car, and, and literally bring it to life in a, in a seven row luxury crossover. Um, so the styling is gonna be much more dramatic than what's out there, sexier, much more aggressive. The interior takes the level of craftsmanship and touch points way up versus what you can get. And I, I think here in LA, you're going to see a lot of customers coming back and forth from our stand in Acuras, and, and we invite that kind of check yep. us out. Well, but, have, have them sit in the back as well. It's more uh, more leg room in both the second row and the third row than a, than a Cadillac Escalade. You have a younger child, do you? I, I do. I do have a, yeah, I have, well, I, have four, I have four children, but one of them is very young. Okay, so if you were driving this in Japan, which Maybe when we don't have it there, but here in the U.S., yeah. we have another very unique thing about it, and that is the way you can get in and out of it. So it's literally going to be the only vehicle available where you can keep a child seat in that second row, slide that seat forward, and then get access to the third row. Huge time saver for parents, a really, really differentiator on the product as well. Yeah. One other area that I think I want to point out is safety. Yeah. So people buy for safety. Um, and, and to go back to the question, what's different? 
Well, this has a whole package of safety shield elements that we've pioneered. So for example, blind spot intervention, but this one takes it step further with the backup collision intervention system. I, Andy, maybe you can give a more, couple well, more details well, on yeah, it. Well, it's, yeah, uh, obviously it's part of our safety shield policy and uh, what it does is it, it, it gives you eyes in the back of your head. So uh, let's say you're reversing out of a car parking space, you haven't seen a pedestrian or you haven't seen a, you haven't seen a car coming the other way. The first thing that the system does, it gives you a, a visual and an audio um, warning that there's, there's something approaching. And then if for some reason you, you, you still don't, uh, you still don't uh, react, the car will actually brake for you, yeah, it's which, is, uh, which is great. I mean, it's uh, you know, it, it really great from uh, in, in car parts where you've got kids walking around the backs of cars, you've got uh, always narrow spaces. I mean, I guess we've all had near misses in car parks. This is a fantastic way of just giving you that extra security. Absolutely, and I, I think if you think about this, this is something that's gonna protect property, yep. but, but this is gonna protect lives as well, and, and that's, one of those ways that we're trying to shake up the marketplace with something very different. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to another question sure. here, which is from Jed Donahue. And Jed writes, uh, it looks like Infinity's partnership with Red Bull Racing is strengthening. Can you tell us a bit more about where the partnership is headed? And, and you, Andy, I'd like to turn that one over to you. Yeah, sure. Well, R Red Bull Racing, of course, it's uh, Formula One. I don't know whether you guys in, in the U.S. Are, are fully turned on to Formula <laughs> One just, just yet, but hopefully you're getting there. Every once in a while we watch, right. I can assure you, we're starting. Well, you've got two, two major Grand Prix in future coming to the U.S. Yeah, thank so goodness. Ho hopefully that's going to raise awareness of, of Formula One. But look, look, Formula One, over 500 million people watch Formula One every season. Mm. 500 million. That's an awful lot of people. Now, uh, our... our um, relationship with Red Bull is we're basically the, the principal sponsor, um, which is one side of the equation. We're also a technical collaborator, so we're working with them in terms of making them a little quicker uh, using some of the Infinity technology. So it works in both ways. Now, the, uh, the relationship is uh, obviously um, we, we have our branding on the car. It's helping to raise awareness of the car. Uh, we're, the, we're the fourth most visible brand, brand on the grid this year. Um, the top top brand. And that's starting from nothing, that's right? That's from nothing. From this nothing. We're absolutely starting, yeah. nothing. So, uh, you know, Red Bull was number one, Vodafone is number two, Total is number three, Infinity is number four. So it, it, we're getting our name known in, in, you know, in front of those right. 500 million fans. Sebastian Vettel is the face of Infinity. Uh, Sebastian Vettel has won the, uh, the championship this year. He was the championship uh, winner last year. He's the youngest ever uh, double back-to-back uh, -back, uh, champion. Uh, and he's somewhere, he's somewhere very close to what the brand is. You know, he's successful, he's young, he's good looking. But he's a nice guy. I he's mean, a, I, I, it's the kind of guy you would want to hang out with. I absolutely. Mean, there's no yeah. pompousness about him. That, and that, that kind of, I think, represents what you were talking about, about our brand. Yeah, yeah. Well, our brand is all about uh, inspired performance and, you know, winning in the way that he, he, he has this season. I think he's been on pole position 14 times. Mm. Uh, I mean, he, he's a he's a great representative of the of the brand, and of course, he drives in, he drives his own Infinity. He owns a, he owns an FX50. Hmm. Well, listen, you know, I, I think in terms of Formula One here in the U.S., um, we're we're in about 50 events here in the U.S., and you can actually find out information about them on Facebook. And we invite fans out to to be with us, either at dealerships or at just the local events around the nation. The key is the two races coming. Absolutely. I think New Jersey's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's gonna be exciting. And then there's one more potential in Austin. Yes, indeed. So we're gonna try to push uh, Formula One here as well. And I think the acceptance will grow. So let me go to another one here. This is from Megan Kunath and she's asking, what is the price of the JX? And so I guess I'll take that you one You take on. that one. The, uh, the JX will start at 40,450. So for the front wheel drive, $40,450. The all wheel drive, is forty-one thousand five hundred fifty, so it's only eleven hundred dollars more. Now that's priced right in the heart of this family luxury crossover segment. The nice part is, in the United States, is you can actually reserve a JX as of today. So the pricing with all packages will be available online, and I can tell you, you can even start to work on what a lease price point would be. Our our lease price point on the JX is five hundred forty-nine dollars for a front-wheel drive, very well equipped. It's literally going to shake up the segment with what this is. This car is all about. Um, let me move on to another one, and it says here: Will the JX and future Infinity products with V6 with the V6 feature direct injection gasoline in the future 
Is there any other fuel saving technologies that you're you're planning on? And this is from a gentleman named Ruben Quinones. I don't know, Andy, if you want to take that on. Well, well obviously the, the, the fuel consumption on this car is, is, is pretty good. It's uh, 23 miles per gallon. Um, and obviously that, that utilizes a, a number of, of, of embedded uh, technologies. Um, now, in terms of, of Infinity as a brand, is, uh, is Infinity driving forward with, uh, with, with uh, fuel consumption uh, improving technologies? The answer is yes. Mm. Uh, well, obviously, we have the, uh, the hybrid, uh, which is available on the uh, M, for example. Interestingly, because uh, it's a kind of proof point that, that the hybrids don't need to be boring. Um, we've got uh, the, the, the world record, I think, we, in terms of the... We just won the Guinness Book of the, World the, Records. Exactly. Right. You have the Guinness Book of Records here? Oh, we do. You we do. do. That, My well, kid they, reads it to me every night, I can assure you. Really? Yeah. What, the same bit? The, the Infinity is the... It's the, all in there. The yeah, fastest the, accelerating hybrid ever? Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, that's, so, the, the Infinity... So, hybrids don't need to be boring. So, the other, I mean, on, on the other extremes, um, I, I suppose um, not for the US, but we're introducing a lot of new diesels. Uh, that's, that's important for our, our brand in, uh, in Europe. And of course, um, by 2014, we'll be introducing the uh, first EV sedan. Uh, and that, there you go, there's the, really the first luxury uh, EV sedan, which I suppose is the, uh, the, penult uh, was the ultimate in terms of, mm. uh, of, of, of zero emissions. You know, there's actually, there's an, there is a question here from a gentleman named Hamahamed on, is there any plan to display that electric vehicle concept in the future? Can you tell us when that might be? Uh, yeah, that's coming, that's coming up soon. It's, if it's, it's, it should be New York, New York. of next year. Right. So probably, Mohammed, we're talking about April time frame of this year. Mm. That's generally when New York falls in. So you'll be able to see that concept. Then, Andy, you mentioned today that that EV is going to be a sedan. Can you talk a little bit about that? It is a sedan, yes. Uh, and it, it's not only a sedan, it's absolutely an infinity. So there's, there's, there's no compromises on the car itself. It, it's, uh, again, it's, it's seductive, it's sexy in its execution. Um, it drives like an infinity, and one of the benefits of, a, of an electric car is you get instantaneous torque. So it's great fun to drive, um, but it's it's done in a in a in a body style which is which is sedan, which has been a challenge for the engineers. But um, I, I I signed off the um, the design with Shiro Nakamura just last week, and it and it looks terrific. Yeah, I saw it. I was in Japan about three weeks ago. The design is stunning. I think the interior, in in a way, is tremendously stunning yes and there's going to be some features in there which we will talk about when we show this new concept um, in particular at how we deliver the technology inside that's going to be amazing yeah there's some stuff that's uh, that you, you haven't seen uh, in the industry I think uh, the Nissan group is uh, is leading EVs uh, right now with the, with the leaf but uh, the infinity vehicle uh, is is just going to move that technology on uh, onto a new level. I'm ready, I'm ready. So there's a there's a question that says, it actually came from me, Ben, if you had to pick what is your favorite feature of the Infiniti JX? And frankly, there's one that I didn't mention earlier that is my favorite feature. And it's really what's, what's called Infiniti Connection, which is our new telematic system. You know, there are some telematic systems in some cars out there available in the marketplace now. But the, the difference with, with their telematics and ours is that we're gonna bring in the human element into this. So we, every Infinity comes standard with a, a, an Infinity personal assistant. It's a concierge service. I like to say I'm addicted to mine. Andy, I, you, I, oh, it's terrific. I, it's, uh, I, I have one on, uh, on, on a black card, but uh, the, the Infinity one is even better than that. I haven't reached the black card status yet. Oh, but really? I, I really maybe, need to keep working harder. Maybe someday. <laughs> but uh, the idea behind the concierge service or the Infinity personal assistant is that you call them up and they help you with life's whatever. Um, I use it to order flowers. I've used it to get dinner reservations, suggestions for where I can go in a city. Um, I, I know it may sound different, but I love yoga. And every time I go to a different city, I ask for where a yoga um, studio is. But what you're going to be able to do with personal assistant and the connection, Infinity Connection is talk to your personal assistant live, get a real advice and then they'll be able to send the directions for the address for where that place is directly to your car and the connection will pick it up and you can go right on your way. So really a nice touch with the, with the luxury uh, personal standpoint and also the technology. Yeah, it works really well, it works really well. I'm a little worried about the yoga and the flowers though, Ben, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm in touch with my side there, I guess. 
Uh, it says here, it does, there was another question here from Jason. You mentioned it about the M hybrid and the Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about how you set that up to get the, the Guinness Book of World Records? Um, I mean, obviously, it wasn't a, it wasn't an outright intention from the beginning. But um, you know, um, we, we, whenever you whenever you look at ways to try to communicate uh, uh, what what the brand stands for, being able to have some proof point to what was useful in the, in the world, the Guinness Book of World Records was was simply a way of doing that. Actually, I think one of the nicest ways, if you go online, I think onto YouTube, you can uh, you can see a, um, a video on there of Sebastian Vettel in a in a hybrid mm. uh, racing against. Mark Webber uh, in a conventional M, and they're going around the Nürburgring, right. and, and that's uh, it's a, it's a, it's it's worth the I think it's a seven-minute video, uh, but it's absolutely worth having a having a look at going on YouTube. It's there. Uh, I'm sure if you type in, uh, in Infinity Sebastian Vettel, uh, you'll find it. And it's yeah, uh, that that video is actually posted on our Facebook site. Oh, there as there well. you go. So you can go to Facebook and you, and you can see that on there. So let me move on to another question here, um, and this actually has to do with the global headquarters. So I'm yep. gonna, I'll, I'll tee this up. It came from Megan and it says that Infinity recently announced it's moving its global headquarters from Japan to Hong Kong. Uh, can you tell me why you're doing that and what the implications are for the brand? Well, obviously we're doing, we're, we're making the move for the brand. I mean, I mean it's, uh, the Infinity, first of all, it, it, it needs some uh, oxygen and separation right. uh, fr from the from the, the Nissan brand. So uh, moving it out of uh, Japan and putting it in Hong Kong is it's one of the reasons is is that is, is that oxygen. Let let Infinity live in its it, it clearly in its own right. Um, secondly, if you if you had a clean piece of paper and you were looking at where luxury cars are, are going and growing. Um, I mean, the United States is always going to be there. Sure. Um, but when you look at what's growing, it's Southeast Asia, it's China, and um, you know, then you say, okay, well, where would I put a where would I put a headquarters if I had mm. a perfect chance? And you go, well, Hong Kong, Hong Kong's the the, the entry point to uh, China. It's the entry point to Southeast Asia. It's geographically close to Japan. It's obviously got a lot of heritage with Europe, uh, English speaking, so it, it works well with, with the US. It's just the perfect place uh, to, to build a team of expert, real experts in terms of, of, of what Infinity brands for, so, uh, Infinity brand stands for. And remember, part of what Infinity stands for is Asian hospitality. Yeah, I think that when I, when I look at it from my perspective, it's just a, more of a separation of the two brands, for yep. sure. Now we did that here in the U.S. We separated into an, what we call the Infinity Business Unit. That's what I have the pleasure of, of working with. And as we've done that, it really helps to separate from Nissan. Let's be honest, we yes. are a Nissan corporation, and I think this is only going to help more. No, absolutely. And I, I think I th you know I think we really know what Infinity stands for now. You know, this, this, this fusion of inspired performance and hospitality really allows us to drive to a place where nobody else is. Yeah. And, and when you've got the, uh, the the authority to do that, which you which 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 you have now, you know, make cars that, that perform better than BMW, make cars that that are more hospital have more hospitality. Uh, elements than any other any other car on the market. It's just a white space. It's somewhere nobody else is. Absolutely. So, Andy, there's another question, and this came from obviously a gentleman in the Middle East who was asking, "Will the JX be available uh, in the Middle East?" I can't answer that question. I'll, I'll <laughs> let you take it. Well, I'm not sure that we've announced uh, all the places where JX is going yet, but uh, uh, you can be sure that whenever we launch a new car, generally we have more than one destination in mind. So right. uh, I don't know where the where the gentleman's from, but uh, if he's in a territory where uh, Infinity is already launched, there's a there's a reasonable chance that he'll be it getting. It seems appropriate for the market. It, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. So there is a question here from Ann uh, Easton, and she's asking for the IPO convertible. Are there any changes versus the IPO G Coupe? But there's also several other questions about the future of IPO. Sure. So why don't I take that? You take that one. No, yeah, no, you take that. I don't think it's so yeah. the, the IPO G convertible is is really a mirror of the the G Coupe. So all the stuff we put into the G Coupe, um, you'll get in the convertible. Uh, increased horsepower, increased torque, better handling, massive dual rear port exhaust. I mean, it's a it's a true cat back dual exhaust, um, which look great, but they sound even better. Um, all kinds of touch points inside in terms of the interior and also you get a, a lot of the, the, the effects through ground effects and uh, body kit etc on the outside of the car. Looks great on those 19 inch wheels as well. The 19 inch wheels are hot, they're delicious, you almost want to eat them, they're so delicious, mm -hmm. that's how I describe them. Uh, and I, you know, but I think 
this is a stepping point, right? I mean, this is an entrance sure. for our brand. So maybe you could talk a little bit about, do we go further from here? What happens? Yeah, clear, clearly, um, you know, IPL is something that we want to uh, exploit further. It, it's, it resonates really very, very well with what we're doing with Red Bull. So, so going, going racing with, with Red Bull, it's normal that we would have a performance element to our brand. I mean, Infinity is sporty by definition. Sure. But uh, if you can push it further uh, with the IPL brand, and I think you, you well, I don't think, I know that you're going to see more vehicles coming of that, of that nature. Um, not just all about horsepower. Uh, horsepower is relatively easy to deliver. Um, what, what, what I'd like uh, IPL to be is, is, is even more about uh, handling mm. and even more about luxury appointments. Um, so make those cars a little bit special. But they need to drive, they, mean, they really need to drive special. So particularly around the handling, uh, that's really where I'd like to see IPL going. And obviously there's a, there's a natural synergy effect with, uh, with the engineers that we, you know, at, uh, at Red Bull helping us out as well there. So, you know, when you buy into IPL, somewhere you're buying into this F1 dream as and well. I think you're buying into the Inspire performance. It's true definition, and that, that's kind of how I look at no, it. No, absolutely. I, I mean, you, you know, Formula One is inspiring performance. Infinity is inspiring performance. IPL if you will, is the is the pin pinnacle of that inspired performance. Yeah, yeah. So, and, Andy, obviously, we have somebody here from Germany who's writing in and saying, which new models will you see launched in Europe, especially Germany? Very interested in Germany. How many more dealers are you going to have in Germany? I guess maybe you could take that on and sort of talk about the plans for Europe. That would well, yeah. Great. I mean, um, we, we're obviously um, the brand is relatively new in in Europe. Let's let's speak to Germany specifically because uh, it's the heart of the uh, of the luxury market, if you if you will. Um, I think the song goes, if you can do it there, you can do it anywhere, or something, <laughs> something along those lines. I think it's tough here, too, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be honest. Exactly, but, um, you know, I think we have five, five Infinity uh, dealers in Germany today. I think we're opening three more this year, so we'll be up at eight. Uh, by 2016, I think we're going to be at about 40, so, you know, it's a big, big expansion. Um, having, the right, having the right models in, in Germany is going to be important. Um, now, we have the benefits of, uh, of a uh, collaboration with, with Daimler, which helps us access to, to some, of the, uh, some of the diesel engine uh, yeah. technology in particular, which is absolutely critical for the European market. I think the most interesting, uh, interesting product action for uh, Europe is, um, is the Etheria. Uh, concepts. Now, let me put that in context. That's that's a, that's a compact, a C-segment type of vehicle, um, not unlike, let's say, an Audi A3 or a BMW mm -hmm. One, but done in an Infinity way. So it's very, very different from from the way that Audi A3 is executed. It's absolutely an Infinity, uh, and that's a that's a, a product which will will be launched globally, but is really honed and tuned for smack in the centre of uh, of the German market. But you know. That's what is great about the expansion for me is because there are cars that are going to be available here in the Americas that we never would have gotten right. potentially had we not grown as a brand. So if you have the ability to sell that in Europe in quantities yep. that allows us to build it here and that car is coming here to the U.S. as well. It is and uh, the Ethereum concept is, uh, is really beautifully executed. I have to compliments to the design team. It's, uh, it doesn't look like anything, to, anything out there today. Um, it's kind of crossover-ish in its execution. It's neither, a, it's neither a hatchback or a sedan. It's, it's really creating its own space. I'm, I'm really excited about Shiro it. Shiro-san and I talked about yeah. it during our last chat so he, he was bringing up a lot of those, those points. Now there are some questions here, and I, I'm going to tee this up a little bit off the theory because there's a lot of questions. Here's one from Javier Javier Chocon, Chocon Martinez. I'm going to say it that way, and he's asking about the next generation of LED lights. Are we going yeah. to see? And I know that the, the, the light on that Ethereum is, is pretty interesting, right? Yeah, indeed. And, and does that point to the future a little well, bit? Of what obviously, it, it, it points to the design language of Infinity. Yeah. Uh, the, I mean. LED lights are, are not the um, not the intention all by themselves, but LED lighting allows the designers to have more flexibility. Mm. The, the, the lighting concept for for Infinity is to be cat-like, animal-like. Mm. Um, it's to create the eye. 
with the, with the eyelid, the iris, uh, basically to bring bring the front of the vehicle alive, make it uh, make it animal-like in its uh, in its execution. And in fact, when you look at the way that the side of the vehicles are designed, it's almost like uh, uh, you know a big cat on its on its haunches, ready to ready, ready to, to go, go forward. Yeah. So it's about uh, it's about living that, and um, uh, of course the LED lighting technology really allows you to bring that to life. I think there is a video of the Ethereum online where you can really see that, and if not available readily, I'm going to ask my team to post it on Facebook today again. Take a look at that light. It, it does have a soul, I think, and mm -hmm. I think it really points to some design language that we could go after. Shiro talked about that a lot. I'm amazed at how many people were asking about LED lights. That's why I had to bring it up. Well, also, um, the, re the rear of the cars will also use uh, uh, LED technology. Uh, as I say, it gives you so much flexibility. Among other yeah. things, it allows you to get the size of the lamp down, which uh, again makes it uh, makes it look sleek, makes it look uh, aggressive, um, and, and really, I mean, the the, the 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 front of the cars really come to life. I'm going to have to take on another question about JX and pricing because it, it's from Daniel Simon, obviously from Canada. He's asking when will pricing in Canada will pricing in Canada be similar to the U.S. And the answer is yes. Uh, the pricing will be similar, will be priced on the Acura MDX in Canada as well, so you can expect to see that moving forward to, to provide that same kind, of, same kind of value. There's a question here from um, Yosuke, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, asking, I heard the JX will be manufactured in the US, if so, which factory? You want to talk a little bit about the... Well, it's, uh, uh, yes, it's, it's, it's been manufactured in the US. Uh, the, 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 the major market, uh, um, of course, as you've heard, is, right. is, is the United States. Um, it's the first. It's the first time we've bought uh, Infinity outside of the uh, of the factory in Japan, uh, but it's been done with uh, a, a, a lot of collaboration from the guys in Tochigi. So, you know, hopefully the uh, uh, the guys in Tochigi feel proud of what they've done with with, with uh, um, the North American team. I'm absolutely confident. I've been tracking uh, very very. Uh, diligently that the quality of the vehicle produced here is going to be at least equal to if not better but at least equal to this is a world class plant yeah right? it's I yeah, mean, it's it's, a, it's absolutely and uh, I, you know I, i'm i'm sure i i'm, I'm tracking it uh, every week um, the, the quality is going to be very very good from from the us and it's a us vehicle for a us a us consumer Hope, hopefully uh, everyone's going to be uh, in the united states is going to be very very proud of this car well, Andy, that's about the end of our time, and I want to thank everyone for sharing uh, your questions with us today. We'd love to have answered more, um, but it's really, we really, really appreciate it. Uh, we got a lot of great feedback from the last chat, so we decided to continue these on. Andy, a real honor to be with you here today. Right, honor to be in, in, in Los Angeles, and I love coming here. And really appreciate your time. And, uh, you know, if we didn't get a chance to answer your questions during today's live chat, it, we invite you to post them on Facebook. So if you do, we'll, um, we will absolutely try to answer them to the best of our ability there. Um, and so it, 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 it's saying you can join us on Finney's Facebook page on November 21st at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard. Um, and any of our product specialists will help, will be glad to help you at that time as well. Um, also stay tuned tomorrow at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. There we're going to be another exciting sports car concept. Uh, announcement for the Geneva Motor Show, so we're going to have that as well, this and we'll is, post that on Facebook. Yeah, this is a really interesting, a really interesting car. It points you somewhere towards the uh, the way Infinity is going, design language, but also powertrain. I'm, I'm excited with this announcement. Well, uh, great to be with you. Thank you so much. We so appreciate you being spending some time with us today, and uh, check out the all-new JX. I think you're going to love it. Check out the car; it's great. Thank you.